Hey, everyone. Welcome to Widow Too Soon. Welcome to another episode. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, Mark Massaro. I'm here with my co-host and friend, Michelle Bader. Michelle, what's happening? Hey. Well, it's been an interesting week, so I thought I would share some of the stuff that's been going on. Well, I got jury duty, so (laughs) have you ever had jury duty? Nope. Yeah. I don't know why, but I've never had it. Yeah. So I thought that I was going to get out of it. There were 31 of us there and you have to answer random questions and they were only going to choose 13. So I'm like, no way. You know, I don't know why they would choose me, but guess what? I was jury juror number one. (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't believe it. They called my name first. Anyways, it it was an interesting experience and I just tried to just stay in a positive place and like, okay, God, you're in charge of everything, like every little thing. And what can I learn today? So that was my, uh, my interesting thing. Um, I missed work to go to that. Uh, let's see what else happened. Um, I started CrossFit like officially going. Mm. So that's been good. I think when you're a new widow or widower, it's important to find new things that you like. Mm. And this is something I'd always kind of thought of. And then I saw a CrossFit gym, like a half mile from my new house. And I was like, okay, I'm going to join. It's hard. (laughs) It's definitely (laughs) challenging all these like people that are so strong (laughs) and I'm way behind everybody. (laughs) You got to start somewhere. It's cool. You're going to get all buff. I am. I, that's my goal. I would like to get all buff. Um, (laughs) The car we talked about last week, I actually picked it up and got the new car. So that's nice. exciting to have a car again and let's see just a couple other little things we started setting up our pool which is exciting oh cool Uh, we have you know it's kind of a thing we did with luke so it's a little bit emotional we called it lake bader and we set up like you know the blue pools that are you know four oh the above above ground yes so we've had one since before we had kids luke and i got one when we first got married and um i remember because i was yeah we got it like the second summer we were together and i was pregnant and i would just like float in it and he would go snorkeling in it i have videos of him (laughs) snorkeling (laughs) in our little pool like he loved it that's awesome And so we've never gone one summer without a pool. The kids don't know what it's like to not have a pool. And so as we had kids and they got bigger, we would get bigger pools and bigger pools and bigger pools. And we would call it Lake Bader, like all of our friends know it as Lake Bader. So we started, I'm missing some parts. So it's not all set up yet, but that was kind of exciting. Um, So when he would snorkel, would he like go under you and like push you up? Oh, I just... No, I just have like a video of him going. It was like a smaller pool. So he was just okay. snorkeling by himself. I don't, that's why I laughed. Cause I thought for sure you were going to say he like went underwater and would like mess with Oh you no, that something. would be funny though. I mean, I'm sure he did at some time, at some point. And you know, we have so many good memories in the pool. Like I can't remember what they called it, but the kids would ride on his back and he would like go through oh, the water, nice. you know, when they were little and then he would take the snorkel and then spray up um water and they thought it was funny oh, i have to remember what that was called the daddy whale or the daddy something <laughs> i was gonna say something to do with whale probably yes it was and it, so you know it's kind of emotional anything to do with the pool but it's, it's mm. happy emotions i remember last year we set the pool up three days after he passed away and it was like super emotional um but it just brings me joy you know it's that's great that our family really enjoys so that's one of the big things and then um uh, my two of my kids had a choir concert and um, that was good. So yeah, just nice. keep keeping busy with just regular kind of stuff and looking forward to two more weeks of my job and being off for the summer and um, the kids, two of my kids get out next week. So looking forward to summer. We always do a lot of road trips and traveling and now I have oh, a, cool. a car to take places. So it's exciting. So what about you? What have you been up to? Uh, well, um, I had a party for Memorial Day. That was awesome. Nice. Oh, wait, we had a party for Memorial Day. I'm in California. We're not supposed oh, to do that. <laughs> and you all wore masks and you were all six feet apart. Oh, totally. Yeah. We all socially distanced for sure. And yeah, no, um, you know, I want to be sensitive on that because yes, I know a lot of yes. people have lost their spouse to COVID. And, mm-hmm. um, I remember for us, it was a, you know, it was a fear for a while, of course, as Lacey was very susceptible, did a weak immune system as did Luke, you know? Um, But yeah, no, we had a um, memorial get together. Um, (laughs) It was phenomenal. It was awesome. I had a lot of good times. Um, We played pool. I have a pool table and ping pong table and kids jumped on the trampoline and um, I have a movie projector in the backyard. So um, at nighttime, I pulled down the screen and there were like 
18 kids sitting Whoa. around watching a movie. My daughter made popcorn and I'm not joking Aww. you. Every 30 seconds, she came back in the house and asked if she could make another bag of popcorn because they already <laughs> ate it all. There, that's how many kids there were. I'm oh not exaggerating. Goodness. It was literally less than a minute that the whole bowl of popcorn was gone because the kids would all grab they a hand yeah. and it was gone. And so I let her make six bags of popcorn. Oh my goodness. And then I was like, no, that's enough. That's enough. Like, that's enough. Sorry, kids. But like, I'm not going to let you guys just eat, you know, popcorn throughout the whole movie because like, you know, I'd have to do a store run. Um, yeah. So anyways, we did that. It was a great time. I plan on cooking all this food. Mm -hmm. So I cooked some food, but by the time everybody showed up with side dishes, like everybody was full. So I was like, do you guys want me to like make hamburgers and hot dogs? Everyone was like, no, I'm full. (laughs) So it was a great time. Oh, that sounds fun. Yeah. I just kind of took a few moments and like looked around the house and uh, just saw all these different conversations happening. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a little group over here. There was a group of people playing pool you know, there it was just awesome. It was awesome to like look around at all the smiling faces that yes. were, you know, seeing people looking at pictures of Lacey on my wall was like a yes. really nice moment for me, you know, that people were like having conversations about her and, you know, just sharing memories of her and stuff. And that was unsolicited, you know, that's not what the party was about, obviously. And I mean, it is Memorial Day, but as to remember fallen soldiers and not, mm-hmm. you know, those ones we love, but, and, you know, Another thing that was really cool that happened that's like super random, but uh, I had a really good conversation with my daughter. So she's Mm -hmm. eight and she came up to me. She's a very mature eight year old. And she came up to me and said, so daddy, there's, I think there's another boy that I know that would make a good husband. And I'm like, oh, okay. (laughs) Now the girl whose kid it is, they're kind of private. So I'm not going to say the boy's name, but um, she said, so-and-so is really nice to me and he listens to everything I say and he wants to hear all my ideas and um he tells everybody to be quiet so I can finish my stories and I was like you know that's awesome you're looking for the right thing in a man like Uh that's awesome but um so that led into a conversation to where I got to tell her I said well you know you got to see a very unique marriage between your mommy and I. Mm -hmm. And um, I just opened up to her and told her about how, uh, you know, mommy was a lot sicker than we led them to, Mm -hmm. than than I let them know. And I just told her, I was really honest with her. And because she's like, do you miss mommy? And I was like, yeah, it was really hard for me. And a lot of times I hid from you guys and was crying in the bathroom and just praying to God for strength and that I could come out here and keep, you know, cause I was like, you guys wanted to climb on me. Like I was a jungle gym still. And <laughs> I just come out of the room, like crying with your mommy. And, um, it was hard cause I was trying to balance two completely different emotions, you know, and she it was, it was amazing. She was like really mm-hmm. understanding. And like, wow. she like thanked me for, for working Aww. so hard for mommy. And, oh, so um, sweet. yeah, it was cool. So anyways, it was, it was a huge blessing. It was just really nice to have that deep conversation with right. them. Cause you know, my kids are young. I haven't had a lot of deep mm-hmm. conversations with them. And, you know, we never, we, we just told them mommy was sick. We didn't right. know what to do, you know? And so it was like, nice to be honest with her and explain why um, I never told her how sick mommy was, you mm-hmm. know? And um, I don't know, it was just kind of, I think it was good for her and me, you know? So that right. was awesome. But um, anyways, oh, that was, that was special. my week and just other, you know, random stuff, nothing, uh, too big. But um, so today's topic, guys, we're going to be talking about navigating the negative emotions. Mm. Now, this is a sensitive topic, because, um, you know, first of all, Michelle and I are going to give advice on this topic, but we still struggle with this ourselves Mm -hmm. often. And Mm -hmm. um, it's not the same as in the beginning. But we still struggle with a lot of these negative emotions and negative emotions, regret, guilt, fear, anxiety, anger, you know, all these things that are very normal that all of us go through, whether it's a spouse you've lost or a sibling or whomever. Um, But these are very normal feelings. So we're going to talk a little bit about our experience um, with how we've handled Mm -hmm. these emotions with God grace. So Michelle, can you touch on this? Like, what are some Mm -hmm. negative emotions that you've struggled with? perhaps like a story or something, you know what I mean? Just something that you found God's grace in a negative emotion. 
Yeah, I think for me, one of the ones that kind of surprised me and I'm finding is pretty common with widows and widowers is guilt. Mm. And the guilt that I had was about Luke and his, his death. And was there something I could have done to stop it? And just as a reminder, if you haven't heard the episode, you know, he passed away from cancer, but the actual cause of death was a blood clot, Mm. which only happens to 1% of cancer patients. So it was very rare, but it was totally a gift from God that he didn't have to suffer at the end. But, um, you know, he had told me for a couple of days that his leg was hurting Mm. and we chalked it up to, um, our hospice nurse had said, you know, you need to be doing these leg exercises to prolong, like how long you could use your leg. Well, he had one leg. He was you mm-hmm. know, prosthetic leg. Now, was one. that the leg that was hurting him? The one that had the amputation? No, no. Because he was his, amputated from the knee down, right? Below the knee. Yeah. So it was okay. his calf. I should be more clear. It was his oh, calf that I'm was sorry. hurting. Yeah. Okay. I didn't make that clear. So it was his left leg because he didn't have his right calf. Mm-hmm. And, um, it, he had been telling me because he'd been doing these calf exercises and he's like, she told me to do 10. I did like a hundred. I'm like, of course he did. <laughs> <laughs> he would always go above and beyond. And That's like, awesome. I, can, I can beat this and I can do this. And he was just working really hard because she had just said, you're probably going to lose all the strength in your legs soon. And he did mm. not want that. So he started doing these exercises. So that's what we both thought the reason his calf was hurting. Yeah, that makes sense. And even our last night together, he had, it was swollen. I saw it and Mm. I, I didn't, you know, like looking back, I'm like, could I have done something then? And Mm. so I, you know, I felt guilt. So they found out, um, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole death thing again, but basically like something broke off from his calf and went either into his lungs when they were filled with cancer. So he couldn't survive or into his heart. Mm. We don't, we don't know. Um, so, I felt such guilt, like guilt I'd never felt before. Like, could I have stopped this? Could mm. I, I remember sitting on my mom's lap, falling, crying the day he died? Like, what if I could have stopped? And she's like, you couldn't have. And then she told me this is a blessing. He didn't have to lose his strength. And I was, but at the moment it was hard to see because it was yeah. so shocking. And the kids thought they would have a long time to say goodbye. And, um, and I even talked to his doctor. She called, you know, a couple of days later and I'm like, what like could I have done anything? She said it didn't matter if he was in the best hospital. There's nothing because we can't give um, cancer patients blood thinners because then they bleed out all their tumors. Oh. So she's like, we couldn't have done anything anyways, even if we knew. Mm. So there is absolutely nothing that you mm. could have done, and so that was helpful to hear. So I really want to just like share with whoever is feeling these guilt feelings of could I have stopped it? I've seen other people sharing it. You know what? God says our days are numbered. So Mm -hmm. it doesn't, if it was your spouse's time, it was their time and there was nothing you could have done. You know, there's verses that talk about, actually, I'll put it in the show notes. I think it's Ecclesiastes. Uh, It talks about a a time to be born, a time to die, a time Mm. for mourning, a time for dancing, you know, so God has our days. Like he says, we will have a time to die, all of us. And so I just want to release you from any guilt you're feeling because guilt is not from God. It's from the enemy. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it was their time to go. There is nothing you could have done if that is the day that God had said it was their time. Yeah, that, That kind of helped me to just realize like, there's nothing I could have done. And even if I could, in my situation, it would just prolong the inevitable and he would have suffered more Mm. if there, like, you know, so, you know, that really, um, that really helped me just to release it. And just Mm -hmm. after I talked to the doctor, there's nothing I could have done. I talked to his hospice nurse, there's nothing you could have done. And then just realizing that we all have our times. I totally get it. Yeah. So that was, that was something big for me is going through that guilt, um, and then letting it go. So, yeah, yeah, I've, I've felt guilt too. Um, because like a lot, well, guilt and a lot of like, what if questions. Mm, So like, you know, Lacey opted to not do chemotherapy and do this clinical trial. And I couldn't help but wonder, like, what if, what if she went the other route, you know? And, um, even though the chances were slim, like there were chances Mm -hmm. and, um, I've, I've talked to so many people that, you know, and I just, I just begged the question the same, like you're saying, like, 
what, what could I have done? Like, what could I have done differently? And I had this realization that I was like, God doesn't need me. Mm, God doesn't need me. God doesn't need doctors. God doesn't need medicine. If it was not her time, he would have done whatever he wanted to save her. He would have just miraculously made her cancer gone in the next scan. And it's hard. It's hard, you know, because you do feel guilty and you, you know, I mean, there were times where I thought maybe she should go do chemotherapy because, you know, we had um, moments where uh, she couldn't take the the clinical trial she was doing was pills. Mm -hmm. And um, because she had so much cancer in her stomach, which by the way, at the end, she did not have any more cancer in her stomach, but her whole, the, the, um, Oh gosh, what are they called? The people, uh, endos, uh, in, the guy in, that does the endoscopy. I can't yeah. think anyway, where they Endo, stick the tube. Yeah. Know. Whatever. One that guy, the stomach doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, but uh, I don't remember. I used to know all this stuff like the right. back of my hand, and I've just forgotten so much, but, um, he pulled me to the side and was like, I've never seen anything like this. Her entire stomach is tumors. Like And I was like, I thought she had ulcers. And he's like, the ulcers are tumors, which I still don't fully understand. But he's like, Mm -hmm. I've never seen anything like this. And he explained to me the two side walls of the stomach. And he said, each wall of the stomach is completely covered in cancer. On her last scan, it showed there was no more cancer in the stomach. But for a long, for long periods of time, she wasn't able to take the pills. And like her cancer was so aggressive that it was like every week that went by that she wasn't taking this clinical trial medicine, like her cancer was progressing. And, um, so she, so I couldn't help but thinking like, maybe we should do chemo, you know, maybe we should do this, maybe we should do that. And, um, it, it, I, I think that God, I think that we went down the road that good because everything we did, we prayed about every single thing, mm-hmm. every decision, everything. And we both felt led in every right. situation. And so um, I did struggle with those guilt feelings too. Uh, there were, there were moments of anger, you know, anxiety. Oh my gosh. Anxiety was mm-hmm. crazy during, after like anxiety was rough for me. I'd never really experienced anxiety right. before. I had panic attacks and I remember one night I had a panic attack so bad that, um, Lacey asked if I wanted her to call 911 and Mm. I said, yes, but she couldn't hear me because I was struggling for my breath so much that, um, she didn't, she just waited it. And she just, uh, she was able to, she was mobile at the time and she was able to crouch to the edge of the bed and, um, Mm. pray over me and put her hand on me. And so, Anxiety is a tough one too. Yes, I know a lot of people feel is. that, but you know, in regards to guilt, there's many reasons that I've read in these widow groups that people feel guilt. Some people right. feel guilt for the reasons we're mentioning. Other people feel guilt because, you know, they got with somebody else or they went on a date or something right. and they feel guilt. They feel like, you know, I don't know, like they're cheating or something. Right. And, um, I could understand that. I haven't, you know, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't really walked down that road of like dating somebody else. I could imagine that, you know, you would feel that way. And Mm -hmm. um, I understand that, but you know, I, I just want to like say to those people that you fulfilled your covenant, you completed your vows and whenever you're ready, it's okay. Like it's okay. And it's like, I don't know. I know my wife doesn't, wouldn't want me to like be alone forever. You know, I know she wouldn't want my kids to grow up without a mother. And when I'm ready and when that opportunity presents itself, like, you know, that'll be a bridge that I'll cross at that time. But I have just, I feel like God's given me the wisdom to know that like you have fulfilled your vows. You fulfilled your covenant. Yeah. You till death do us part you in God's eyes, you honored your marriage. Yep. And, um, you are free, you are yep. free to, um, travel down that road when you feel like you're ready. Um, and I have, so I have some verses to share. Um, they're just good for, I think people going through like emotions and, right. um, but just so everybody knows, like, you're okay to feel whatever you're feeling. There's That's not, right. like Michelle and I can't tell you how you're supposed to feel, right. how you're not supposed to feel. We just want you to know from the bottom of your heart that whatever negative feelings you feel is not from God. God doesn't want you to feel fear. He doesn't Mm -hmm. want you to feel anxiety. He doesn't want you to feel guilt. 
And so uh, this first one I'm going to read is from First Peter chapter 5, verses, I think, 6 and 7. I'll know when I'm reading. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Mm. In due time, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And, um, you know, I just, I really like that. And because it's for one, like, we don't know God's timing. We can't understand, like, think about that. Like God who spoke the universe into existence. Imagine the level of power that God has. It's unimaginable, but just try. Mm -hmm. We are not to tell him what is right or what is wrong or, (laughs) you know, it's true. Um, Mm -hmm. And then, but. Now scrolling down a little further to verse 10 in that same chapter and verse, um, well, whatever, you know what I mean, um, book and chapter, uh, to verse 10, and the God of all grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, mm-hmm. will himself restore you and make you strong, Ooh, firm, and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. And so, yeah, it's like God knows his timing and he knows what he is doing. And so for those of you feeling those feelings, the guilt and the the shame and the remorse and all these negative feelings, like we all go through them. We all have them. And, um, you know, Michelle and I are not (laughs) masters of this Mm -hmm. by any means, but I have seen enough to know that, um, that God doesn't want us to feel that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a verse that I wanted to share that goes along the same lines as that about, you know, God doesn't want us to live in this place of despair Mm -hmm. and all those feelings. It is um, Galatians 5, 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. And what that speaks to me, you know, within this subject is we aren't supposed to be like, like I see like shackles, like, you know, all this stuff, like the guilt, the shame, the this, the that. It's just like, I'm seeing like someone weighed down with all this stuff, but Mm. Jesus has not just only saved us, which is not just only, that's huge, but he also, he came to give us life and give us life abundantly. He doesn't want us to be weighed down. Like it's enough that we went through this, but I see it in widows all the time. Widowers that Satan tries to keep them in this place of all of these feelings for a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's for freedom that Christ set us free. And I I just ran across this, this letter I wrote, actually, I wrote it to God one year and one day ago. And I just, I just want to share how much healing is possible in a year from the way I felt then to how I feel now. And I just thought a lot of you could probably relate to the feelings that I was feeling. So this was two weeks after my husband passed away. So June 3rd, 2020, God, I need you. I'm so sad, too sad to put into words. Like my whole world was shattered in a single moment. I mean, I knew it was coming, but not the way it was coming. I do thank you. The suffering was minimal but I don't know how to get past this pain is debilitating. And I'm having a hard time seeing how I will ever recover. It feels like this might take me out forever. I do know that you have a plan, but it's real hard to see it right now. I just feel pain in every direction. And I'm so lost and hurting. I hurt Mm. for my babies as they navigate a world without daddy. I hurt for myself that I can't ever have a conversation with Luke, my husband of almost 17 years. I hurt when the kids fight and I don't have a partner to talk to about it. I hurt when I wake up and see his things all around and he's not there. I hurt when I think of his last hour on earth and wish I could have done more to help. I hurt when I think of him straining to tell us something. I hurt when I wake. I hurt when I sleep. How in the world are you going to take this shattered heart and put it back together again? I miss his voice. I miss his laugh. I miss his smile. I feel broken beyond repair. I have never had these feelings before where all I can see is clouds and pain, sorrow, and I can't see sun. 
or good on the horizon. God, I really do trust you. I really do know you love me and have a plan, but why? Why did I have to become a widow? Why did Luke have to die? I need your healing touch if I'm ever going to live again. Will there ever be a day it won't hurt so bad? Will I ever feel joy again? God, please help me. Send me some comfort. Send me something to help me not drown in these treacherous waters. Wow. And that I was relate my, to that so right? much. And let me ask you a question. Michelle, now, mm -hmm. what would you say to Michelle then? It will get better. I mean, I would say, listen to the last episode, like, yeah, it will get better. You will. Cause it's even the stuff I talked about how it used to be cloudy with no sun. I mean, I literally right. wrote that then I would say, keep pressing into God because he is the one who will heal your heart. I mean, there's some days I am so amazed at how good we're doing and it's not me, it's Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. and the song that I played last week, healing and like, I just feel like he really has changed my morning into dancing. He really has given me beauty for ashes. And I don't even recognize, I mean, I remember feeling this, but I don't feel like this at all anymore, like at all. And so the reason I read that is to encourage people that are currently feeling this. Mm -hmm. And I bet there were people going, yep, yep, yep. I relate, I relate, I relate to that and that and that, that it will get better. You know, Jesus is a healer like I've never seen before you know, never felt before. I've never felt as close to God as I have in this widow journey. Me too. And you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. because in the deepest pain, he comes the closest and he, he mends, like, I'm just seeing a picture of like him, like a broken heart. And he comes into all of those cracks and he heals it and he makes you stronger than ever. Like, mm -hmm. I definitely feel stronger than I ever was before. I mean, it's Christ in me that's strong, but I mean, just looking at this, I remember I, I wrote it and the next night we had a girl's night. It was a barbecue at one of my friend's houses. And I read this to them and then nobody knew what to say. They were just mm. like, I'm sorry, but I was like, I just need to read oh. this to somebody. And they just sat there and didn't know what to say. Cause of what course. would you say to that? If you'd never been through that? I mean, people they were like, don't, I they think don't know they, what to say. Yeah. I think they prayed for me. Like that's, they didn't know what to do. And it was just so raw and real. And it feels like a distant memory. I mean, I remember it, but I don't, it's like, you can, it's like reading a story. Like I remember it, but I don't, the feelings I can't even relate anymore. I mean, I have, right. you know, I've shared with you, I had a grief moment in like a couple of days yesterday, I think it was, you know, like I have these grief moments, but they're moments. Mm -hmm. they're, they're not days and where right. I can't see the sun and I don't know how life will get better. And so just reading this gives me a new passion again for all of the listeners and all the people out there who are currently in this place, mm. especially people that don't have Jesus. I just, I want them to know. I want you to know if you're listening, you may not know Jesus yet, or maybe you do, but you, you want to get him on to know him on a deeper level. Again, it, it's pressing in, it's praying, it's asking him to meet you. He meets me every day still every time that I pray for specific things, like, I mean, you don't always get an immediate answer, but he just amazes me in the way that he answers things, the way he provided my house, the way he provided my car, the way that I'm healing. I mean, there's just so, so many things. And so I just yeah. want to, you know, encourage people that it's not going to stay like this forever. And mm. I can also relate to anxiety. Um, I shared some on another episode, but I had never had anxiety either. It's actually, uh, I read a book called anxiety, the forgotten stage of grief, that it's mm -hmm. one that isn't listed as the stage, but you know, I had major anxiety thinking I was having a blood clot. Um, I, I would have panic attacks where I was like fainting. This happened for a couple of months and I thought I was dying all the time. And especially, so I read in the book that especially if you've witnessed a death and you have high anxiety about dying. And so it's a real thing, you know, and, yeah. and then just coming to a place to release the anxiety, you know, when you get past the very beginning and then being able to just be like, okay, God, I trust you. Like, I trust you and, you know, releasing that. And yeah. So those are, you know, some of those emotions that I've gone through. Um, are there other ones that have been negative ones that you've had to navigate through? Well, <clears throat> I did want to touch on you know, just partial response to what you were saying for people that um, something that helped me was like a, a real legit answered prayer that um, I can't remember the verse, 
you might know it. It's a real popular one, but Jesus says something to the effect of cast your cares upon me for my burden is easy and my yoke is light. Yeah. My burden is light. My yoke is easy. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and I remember praying to him. I was like, I'm casting my cares upon mm. you. I'm casting my cares upon you because you said you would take them for me. And I feel like he answered that prayer. And like you were talking about God answering prayers. And it's funny, huh? Because like sometimes he'll answer your prayer. And when it's all answered, then you look back and you're like, oh, whoa, yeah. he probably mm-hmm. answered that prayer. And um, but yeah, I related to so many of those things that you were reading. Um, I remember those feelings in the beginning. Right. And and also I totally remember like the feeling I'm going to talk a little quieter, just so my kids don't hear me. But right. like, I remember I was like, well, when am I going to get cancer? Right. When am I going to mm-hmm. die now? Yeah, like me too. And I was so terrified that my kids were going to grow up alone and oh um, yeah, lose both their parents. And um, you know that fear has gone away, thank God. But yes, uh, that was like the worst. That was so bad. Just like every day, I was like, oh my gosh, like now I'm their only. You know, I don't know. I was kind of like before Lacey got cancer and everything. I was at peace with if I died or something, right. you know and but all of a sudden it was like solely right. about my kids and like mm-hmm. just the, uh, the fear of what the rest of their life would look like if they lost me too. And, right. um, but you know, God doesn't want us to worry about that stuff. God doesn't want us to have fears because right. again, it goes back to that. Whatever happens in this life, we are going to heaven. Yep. We are going to live forever in heaven and a billion years from now, we're going to, like I've said before, we're going to look back and be like, whoa, remember that time on earth? Right. Like, this is going to be the weird place that we like totally right. forget about. Like, so it's like, we, we worry so much about this world when in hindsight, it's going to be irrelevant. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. it's like, man, I worried about so much stuff that I just didn't have to, because it's like, God had it in control. God holds the whole world in his hands, right? Mm -hmm. Like that little elementary school song, but I wanted to share something else. So this is one of my favorite um, parts of the whole Bible is the Sermon on the Mount from Matthew Mm -hmm. chapter five, as Michelle always says, side note, um, (laughs) (laughs) something I really want to do is I really want to go to Israel and I really want to be sitting on the sermon, uh, excuse me, on the Mount of Olives while somebody's preaching the Sermon on the Mount. Oh, I don't know cool. why. Yeah. I just always thought that would be the coolest thing to be like, this is where Jesus spoke this. You yeah, know? it would be cool. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's right at the beginning. So now when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him and he began to teach them. He said, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be mm. comforted. Yes. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And the last one I'm going to read is, blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And this goes on. And if you have not read Matthew chapter five, I would strongly advise it. It's beautiful. It is like such a great teaching from Christ. You know, suffering is another negative emotion that we all go through. And whether it's suffering from the pain, suffering from this new life, because at moments still, it's like, man, like this is tough. This is tough doing all this by myself. And, Mm -hmm. um, it also doesn't help that I'm like a neat freak and I, (laughs) (laughs) that I always have to be like, you know, my house has to be like immaculate. Um, that doesn't help me because that adds a lot of unnecessary pressure. I actually just realized this week, I was telling my friend Tamara, I was like, I don't know why I do this. Like I can Mm -hmm. totally get the whole house cleaned on the weekend. Like, I don't know why I like when I have such minimal time, when I get home during the week, like, I don't know why I stress myself and stress my kids out probably (laughs) to like keep everything clean. Like, you know, I think we just tidy up a little bit and you know, it's fine. But like, I'm like, I don't know who I'm doing this for. (laughs) Like my kids don't care, you know, (laughs) like, so anyways, um, but suffering is a common emotion that we go through like when you really think about that, it's like suffering. Like if you think about that word, like we are suffering. 
in yeah. many respects. And that, that goes, that extends to the whole family. Like mm-hmm. my in-laws, um, my brother-in-law, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, father-in-law, you know, my brother, my friends, people are suffering at the loss. That's obviously not the same as it is for you and I, right. and for all these widows, because it's very much a part of our lives. But um, with suffering, it's again, like, I, I like to put things into perspective for myself. When I think about like, oh, I'm suffering. This is so tough or whatever. I, I, this is hard for some people to do. This is just for me as where mm-hmm. this works for me. I take a step back and I'm like, am I really suffering though? Is somebody driving a crown of thorns into my head and spitting on me and whipping my back with the cat, mm-hmm. cat and nine tails and um, which by the way, I'm talking about the crucifixion of Christ and the torture and torment that he went through. Am I really suffering though? And for me, right. I'm like, no, like I will endure this. I will endure this because I'm not going through what Christ went through. And That's so, a good point. you know, that just works for me. I'm not telling anybody that your feelings are invalid or anything right. like that. I would not be foolish enough to, to imply that, but just a tool that works for me that might help one person out there is when I feel bad for myself or I start feeling um, the very real feelings that I have often, um, I just think about Christ and what he went through. And I'm like, nope, I'm not suffering. This world can produce a lot more suffering than what I'm feeling right now. And I, at least my kids are healthy, you know? I mean, there's always, I can always find things that I'm like, well, at least I'm not, I don't know whatever. I don't want to get into like financial stuff, but I was gonna say, at least I'm not struggling financially, whatever. I'll just put it out there. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm not like wealthy, but like, I'm not, at least I don't have that burden that I know a lot of widows have. And I feel terrible for them. That is such a tough spot to be in, but like, there's so many things we feel, but you can still always, always find the good in your situation. That's true. You know, always, always, always something good. There's always something that like, you could say, well, at least blank. Right. My son's a professional at that, by the way, he's five years old. And he's like, he's like, well, at least we didn't this or whatever. Uh-huh. I'm like, that's right, buddy. <laughs> that's really funny. That's so cute. No, it's true. It's, I, I really like that. That's a good point to think about what Jesus went through, mm. you know, that we're not really suffering compared to that. <laughs> right. In respects to how we could be, I mean, and there's even people on this planet today that are like, at least it's not illegal to be a Christian right. in our country. I know a lot of people that are listening are not from the United States, but um, actually I noticed somebody listened from, I think it was China, but like, that's scary. Like there's mm-hmm. there, India, I th- no, not India. I don't know where, but anyways, the point is there's a lot of places in the world where it is illegal to be a Christian. Right. Like you can get tortured and killed for being a Christian. So it's like, again, it goes back to the like, well, at least this, and everybody has those things. Everybody has something that they can look to and grab onto to say, well, at least I have this. And if nothing else, the most powerful one that you can go to that I've gone to many times is, well, at least I have my salvation, right? That is guaranteed Mm -hmm. Can't take it away. Right. Right. I wanted to share. There's so many verses about suffering. Mm. Um, I just found Romans 8, 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Mm. That's a good one. There's there's so many. Um, I, I keep thinking about, I don't have it in front of me, but I can look it up. Um, consider it pure joy when you face trials of mm. many kinds, because you know that the Things produce suffering, <laughs> not the things, I'm just <laughs> quoting it loosely, you know, <laughs> suffering produces perseverance, per- perseverance, you know, complete blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> I often say blah, 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 but it doesn't mean that what I'm saying is not important. <laughs> yeah, I know. I've learned that. <laughs> yes. So anyways, that I, I think of that a lot, that the suffering, yes, it's not compared to other things, but the, it is real. It is suffering. But the suffering is what makes us who we are today Mm, and able to help other people. Like if you and I had not suffered, we wouldn't be here being able to share what God has shown us. You're right. And help other people who are right in the midst of it. And so I like to think of that too, that suffering isn't always a bad thing. You know, it's 
it's a good thing. Okay, so I don't, I heard it in a sermon somewhere like a couple days ago. It was an Elevation Church sermon. Yeah. And they were talking about when you work out, which I'm feeling right now from my CrossFit, like my back is killing me. I'm like, uh. but anyways, you, what you're trying to do and correct me if I'm wrong. I think you know more about this than me is like break down the muscles, like mm -hmm. the fibers so mm -hmm. that they can be built back up. And so yep. it's kind of like what God allows to happen with us, break us down to build us up stronger. Yep. And absolutely. also another thing is like, it doesn't matter whether, because they were talking about like, if it came from God or Satan, it doesn't matter if God allowed it, I can accept it. doesn't matter which hands God has to allow something in order for it mm -hmm. to happen. So mm -hmm. even all of us who have lost our spouses, God didn't cause that. He doesn't cause sickness and all of that, but he allowed it. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, just knowing that like what we're going through, God has allowed it so I can accept it. That's a saying I said, like right in the beginning of Luke's second bout of cancer, I said it over and over and over. If God allowed it, I can accept it. If God allowed it, I can accept it, mm -hmm. you know? And then, yeah, just going back to the, yeah, breaking us down or allowing us to be broken so that we can come back stronger mm -hmm. and you know and so did i get that right about the muscles you're more of the yeah. workout guy yep. so yep. <laughs> okay <laughs> wasn't quite sure but I yes feel no like... that's a great analogy too by the way that yeah. that's and a lot of people um you know i don't know i haven't shared this on here but like in addition to um going through the hell i went through with lacy i also didn't have the best childhood I had a lot of struggles in my life and um, it's absolutely miraculous that I'm where right. I'm at today. It doesn't make any sense. Like um, I'll get into that on another time, but um, I, I, I went through a lot, but it built me into yeah. the man I am. It built mm -hmm. me into the person that Lacey fell in love with. That's right. And like she fell in love with me because of who I was, because of where I came from. And mm. she was proud of the man that I was trying to be. And I was just sharing this about, um, about her earlier with you mm -hmm. that she just truly loved me. And she, um, she saw me for the man that I wanted to be. Right. And she helped me become so much more of the man that I wanted to be. I was watching her celebration of life earlier. It was tough. It was tough right. because I, it brought up a lot of feelings, remembering how I felt at that moment back then. And you brought up a really good point that you said, you know, though, this is probably a good thing because as we're speaking to a lot of new widows and widowers, it might be good for you to reconnect with those feelings. And um, yeah. it just, I just, I remembered a lot just about who she was. She was such a loving and devoted mm -hmm. woman. And it just, I get every time. So the point I'm getting at is that every time I think about her, I become overwhelmed because I'm like, I will never meet anybody like her again. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me. That's, that's right. hard for me because I've told you a lot about her and Mm -hmm. Um, she was a very unique, very special woman. That's, that's something that I struggle with a lot is that I'm like, man, I, I, I don't think I'll ever, I know I won't meet anybody like her again. And that is like, so sad to my heart because what we had was just so incredible and beautiful. Right. And, um, just knowing that I will never have that again. Um, that's, that's how I feel about it right now. Talk to me in a year. I might not feel that way. You mm -hmm. know, God can change and God can do a lot of things and I might love someone just as much as I did Lacey someday, I wouldn't put that out of God's hands right. um, or God's abilities, but um, I don't feel that right now. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that that day will come, but I'm recording it right now so that yes. I can listen to it in a year and yep. see if I'm wrong. Yeah. Just, uh, and I have another Bible verse here that I wanted to share. So this is uh, from second Peter chapter two, verse nine. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. But um, the main part of that was the, <laughs> the first part was uh, if this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials. It's true. God is such a incredible God that when you look for him and pursue him, you will find him. And I just want to encourage all of you to pray for wisdom. Yeah. Pray for guidance, but mostly pray for wisdom because that is something I feel is what we all need. We need God's wisdom so that we can understand why we have to suffer this, why we have to endure this. Because no matter what our, our spouses died from, 
whether it's cancer or COVID or a car accident or suicide or any of the many stories we've heard right. of how someone's spouse died, a random heart attack in the middle of the night at 40 years old. Like right. I've heard a lot of stories, uh-huh, and, me too. but we all have one thing in common is that we lost our spouse. Right. And so we're all on the same road together. And even though it's different, we're on the same road together and we all need wisdom. That's right. And I wanted to comment on something that you said when you were talking about Lacey and the future. And I heard on a, a, it's kind of like a podcast, this show the other day um, on Truth FM called, I think it's Beauty from Ashes. It's Mm. up for widows. Um, They were the woman in charge was interviewing a couple. One was a widow, one was a widower. And the widow explained it like, cause you were talking about, you won't ever find the same love. That's true. You won't ever find the same love, but you'll find a different love. So for example, mm. when you had Alexis, I'm sure you thought I could never love a, a child as much as I love this child. Right. I'm yeah, sure that was you a very, that. very private conversation that I will never tell Luke about, but yes, I had that conversation with Lacey. I was like, I just can't imagine loving another kid right. like this. Well, I think we all <laughs> feel like that with our firstborn, right? Uh-huh. Well, then Luke came along and guess what? Your love expanded and you yep. love him just as much. Wow. And that is what she said. She felt about her, uh, her fiance that they're engaged, that she, it's like, it's expanding to now love him Mm. and it's not the same love. It's a different, like a different relationship that you have with your kids. It's going to be different. And there's things that you love about them. And so for, um, you know, most of us listening that are not currently married and we're looking forward to that someday, that it's going to be a different love and we will always Mm. love our first love. It's just like your kids, you're going to love them. That's really good. Right. I heard that. And I was like, that's so good. Like we don't love one of them more than the other and all of that. It'll take a special person to be okay with like, you have pictures of Lacey. I have pictures of Luke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That is not going to be threatened by that, but that they can understand this concept that Mm. it's not like, oh, you loved her more. And I know in the beginning, and Mm. I know that you and Lacey had a really special love and marriage. Mm. So it probably feels like that right now, but I believe that it's going to change and you will be able to love someone differently, but as much. And that's how I feel about Luke too, is that like we had our own special marriage, but there will be someone that will understand that and that the love expands. So I just thought that was a beautiful example that I just heard. I like that. Yes. I want to share that to encourage. That's encouraging because I've felt like that for a long time. Right. I'm just like, well, I'm probably just going to be single forever (laughs) because nobody's ever going to, nobody. I mean, she set the bar oh I just want to curse about it she set the bar so high (laughs) like ridiculously high Uh and um like how how you know like I've I've told people before I'm like no if some if I do meet somebody and she comes to my house and is like not comfortable with the pictures I have of my wife all over my house I'm gonna be like well sorry but see ya (laughs) see ya (laughs) you know like and that anyways but that's really that's really uh, a positive I Uh like that because um yeah, I don't know. I just uh I've I've struggled with that for a long time and I've just come to terms with it. I haven't like moved beyond it. You know, mm-hmm. I just say I've come to terms with it and I'm like, well, I mean, it's gonna take this like you uh, like a unicorn, right? You told mm-hmm. me about like a unicorn or whatever is like somebody pretty rare. But I don't know, I don't put anything past God. And that's so right. that's why, you know, for me personally, like I'm just I'm just waiting on God because mm-hmm. he knows my heart and you know, so anyways, that's really cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. It's encouraging. Yeah. So, um, I wanted to share one more verse. All right. It's the last one. Um, but this is a really good one. I think this is a good one to, to leave on people's minds as okay. we duck out of here. Um, Joshua one, uh, verse nine, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Mm-hmm. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord, your God will be with you wherever you go. And uh, I don't know. I think that's the part where they were actually about to start marching around the walls of Jericho. Mm, I think so. Um, but anyways, it's uh, it's really powerful. I really like that. And especially the part he says, be strong and be courageous. Because, you know, like I've mentioned before, like people are watching you. Yeah. Unbelievers are watching you and they want to see 
do you really believe what you say you believe? And they won't tell you I'm watching you, but they're watching you. I guarantee it. I guarantee they're watching you because there's something about being a Christian where people are particularly watching you. Yes. And I think it's because it's the truth. So I just like to encourage people to, to try and pull yourself out of the funk. And I'm not, I'm not telling anybody what you are or not allowed to feel your feelings are all valid. We've been through them all. Yeah. But, um, just try, try for God's sake for Mm -hmm. the testimony of Christ to pull yourself out of the funk, represent strength in your faith Mm -hmm. and, and, and pray to God for those things, pray to God for wisdom, pray to God for strength, pray that you can be a testimony because, um, man, it can be a beautiful thing. It can be a really beautiful thing. So, um, do you have anything else on this topic of navigating the negative emotions, Michelle? Um, you know, I think there's other things that you can do too, you know, reaching out to friends to help you or mm. especially like fellow widows who might be a little further in their journey. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. You could reach out to them. And then for me personally, I did um, some grief counseling and that helped me. And I always put a le- link to grief share. It's a free um, grief program you can do through churches that's a great thing. Um, or getting personal counseling. I also do that. So there's a lot of ways to help you navigate through your emotions. And I'll just say it again. If you, if you feel it, you can heal it. Like what we feel we can heal. So it's okay to let yourself feel those emotions because that is how you can move forward and be healed. And so it's not, it's not that we want you to like suppress your emotions. It's okay. No. Like go through it, but yeah. then don't stay there. Don't stay stuck in the emotion. I think that's the important part. Like I go through probably like 100 million emotions in one day. That sounds and, about accurate. Right? Yeah. I was going to say, if you're my friend, <laughs> you know this. And it's okay. It's like, okay to have, it's like not staying stuck in the negative ones. Mm. And um, so I, I don't want people to think that's what we're saying is that you can't feel them. So definitely right. feel it. And yeah, seek help if you need it, pray a lot, you know, that's, we've talked about that a lot of making it a conversation, a relationship. It's not all formal. I know both you and I, you know, have got sit, Jesus sits up with us on our way to work. You do that. Yeah. Like I used to just pray. And then when you started saying that I started doing that, I like pat the seat, literally. I love it. And I'm like, Jesus, sit down. And I'm like, I clear like, a spot. I, me too. And today I was like, or yesterday, the first day of the car, I'm like, Jesus, I got a new car. Come sit right here. <laughs> that's awesome know, and he's just, like this thing's awesome i know I'm like, it's not messy like the other one it's all clean for you i hooked you up daughter <laughs> that's right <laughs> and it's just you know where wherever and then i talk i think i talked about it last week i take walks now where i'm like pretending not pretending he's there but i'm visualizing that mm. jesus is literally walking next to me and it's just yeah i it, i get excited that we can have such an intimate personal relationship Mm. with the God of the universe who it's like, yes, we can go to therapy. We can talk to our friends, but God is the only one who can actually has the power Mm -hmm. (laughs) to do Mm -hmm. something about these immovable situations and our future and all of that. And I think I heard in a sermon, I like to listen to a lot of sermons and different things that it was talking about, like, or maybe it was a book, like God doesn't always give us that answer right away. You know, it's like, he wants us to trust so that we become closer to him, trust Mm. the process of what we're going through. And so if you are in that dark season, like trust God, you will get through it. And, you know, like we said last time, it will get better. So I guess that's, you know, what I wanted to add. Yeah. I love that. No, that's awesome. So, um, how about I, you okay with me praying for us? And then yep. you maybe talk about, um, you know, like tell people about like our Instagram and where to yep. message us and Sounds all that good. stuff. Um, because we want to, we want to hear from you guys. You know, yes. we'd love to, like, if you're hurting, just send us a huge email, like mm-hmm. use us as your therapist. Like, not like we have answers or anything, but like, if you need to talk to someone, send us a huge email and tell us your whole story, like whatever. Um, so I just want to encourage people in that, but I'll let you actually talk about it, but let me pray for us. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, heavenly father, I thank you so much for this, um, extremely blessed opportunity to reach out to people and, um, just share what you have shown us. Um, and I pray for all the people that are hurting and struggling with negative emotions that you would strengthen them, give them courage and wisdom 
to know how to navigate these waters because it is challenging for us. And uh, I pray that you would be there and see us through as we struggle and um, don't have understanding and have anxiety and anger and sadness and all the emotions that you understand, that you know, that you've felt on a greater level, a far greater level than we will ever feel. You understand the feeling of loss, betrayal, everything. And I just pray that for who's ever listening right now that needs it, Lord, that you would just touch their soul and just let them know that you're there. And if they cry out to you with anger, that you would show them grace mm -hmm. and just, um, just fill our lives back again, Lord. I pray that you would just, um, just fill our souls with your love and your joy so that we can feel again and that we can um, just have peace knowing the outcome and the final destination for all of us. And uh, I just thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your grace and for your love. Thank you so much for those things. And I thank you for the blood of Christ. And I pray and ask you everything in his name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Well, thank you. So just to thank wrap you, it, just to wrap it up, um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can follow us on Instagram at widow two with the number two at widow two soon underscore, send us a message there. You can also email us and a couple of people took this up, you know, did this this last week. Um, it's widowed too soon with the two widowed too soon m as in mark and michelle at gmail.com and we will respond to you and um, also you can send us your prayer requests and we'll be praying throughout the week and we will also be doing a live where we can pray for you on air so we want to be here mm -hmm. for you help you build this you know be part of this community that we're building um, also, if you like this, we'd love if you could rate and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen, and uh, give a little five stars, and if you want to say some words about it. And again, this is not because we just need to hear how great we are. What happens, and we actually saw it this last week, is it moves us up in the ranking so that more people find us so that more people can get healing. And so we'd love your, your help with that. And if you, you know someone who's grieving, whether they're a widow or not, we'd love it if you share this episode with them so that they can also um, hopefully get some hope from it. So thanks again for joining us and we will see you next week. And feel free to share it. We've yes. noticed, uh, you know, feel free to put it on Facebook. I had someone ask like, if it's okay. So yes, feel free yes, to share please. it, like tell people about it. If you know anybody that's hurting, and you think it might help them, like just feel free. It's totally, you know, no obligation, but feel free to share it if you'd yep. like to. All right. Thank, Thank you. God bless you all. Nice.